What is going on you guys? Tutorial Tim here and today I'm going to show you how to create a type system in Figma, specifically Material Designs type system. Uh, the link will be in the description to reference the type system Material has created. Um, and basically it's just going to give you a general idea of how to really develop a type system um, that is utilized for your content, specifically your components and, and the patterns we'll be creating here in Figma. Um, I also recommend messing around with this type <clears throat> this type skill generator they have this nice little interactive element to the web page that allows you to really see um, the type scale in different fonts um, specific maybe more than likely a font family you're using you could see what that looks like at scale um, and if it's a great resource figured I'd share it and again I recommend going through all this so basically we're going to be going over creating this from scratch and developing them into type textiles in Figma that are easily reusable across your design system and the one we'll be building. Um, so let's get started. So I've got Figma open here and you can also access this exercise file if you don't want to do it and just want to grab the values. Um, I'll have that Figma file a link in the description. So we got our our examples of the properties summed up here for all of our headers, our subtitles, body, and content such as button, caption, and overline. And we're basically just going to be applying all of these properties to our textile. So without any further ado, let's get started. All right. So now that we got this, I'm going to open up my type tool here. And I'm just going to select, type in H1. I'm going to set this to auto width because I don't like any unnecessary um, outerlying space other than what's specified for the type. And I'm just going to set this size to 96 which it already is um, the line height is set to auto but the letter spacing we're going to modify to negative 1.5 as specified I'm gonna make sure I select that here select my type and then type in negative 1.5 hit enter it tightened here the kerning and um, or, or letter spacing better word for it as indicated here um, and anyways I'm gonna continue to develop these type styles here I'm gonna type in H2 select my typography ensure that I got the letter spacing right so I don't forget and set that to negative 0.5 hit enter and uh, again if you are confused with anything and want to understand the properties more um, you can click on this icon here with your text selected, the more icon, and uh, view all the properties that this typeface has to offer. And one important thing to note that is uh, if you're using a different typeface but creating this type system, there are features in specific fonts that um, are offered and aren't offered. So if you are seeing some features here that aren't offered in a separate font you're using in, in context of this video, um, it's probably because it doesn't offer the functionality. So just note that. Um, I also recommend kind of reading through all of this. It's very great information. Um, but that is for another video. If you'd like me to make it, leave a comment in the comment section below. And anyways, we got our letter spacing specified. We need to change the sizing here. And the weight is good. And so is the line height. And you can kind of start to see this process very straightforward. And you repeat that uh, moving forward. The only intricate details I'd say before I zip through this is the button property. So if I go ahead and type in all lowercase, I can actually apply the all cap sentence casing in the text properties, which is fantastic. Um, I'm going to do that by selecting the uppercase property. And there are other properties such as lowercase, title case, small caps, and four small caps. And I just wanted to note that because I think that is very important so I'm, uh, for these textiles to really optimize them. Um, so we're going to go to letter spacing and implement add in 1.25. We got the letter spacing set. Now I'm just going to change the size and weight. Set to medium. And now we have our all caps button. We don't even have to hold down shift, with this, which is fantastic. And one other minute change here for this textile is that we're going to, to of course, change the size and weight. But most of all, when we go to the text properties, 
we're going to change the case to four small caps um, to be in line with uh, the case here uh, just because the font size is so small it's set to 10 and other than that you guys can go ahead and make the rest of these um, also I'll have this file in the description below so I'll be right back with all these textiles all right so now I now I've got all the textiles created with the proper properties uh, I hope you did that exercise too um, and anyways now we're gonna go about organizing our styles and then publishing them and that'll be the rest of the video so um, we're gonna be utilizing the way Figma structures um, accessing textiles um, there's a really nice way to like thoroughly separate all the header content from the subtitles from the body as well as the the textiles for other types of content um, such as buttons and captions and overlines so I'm just gonna go here select my textile click on this icon uh, click the plus button to create a style and I'm gonna type in headers slash and with this slash naming convention it's actually gonna allow me to um, separate out my text styles by category so we're gonna have our headers and subtitles and body and separate as well as the content such as buttons caption and overlines so I'm gonna specify this h1 here and then it's gonna add this little dot here to separate it so I got my h1 and you can also specify the weight of the font which is this h1 is a light h1 in case you have variants of the h1 later on down the road for specific reasons and one thing we can also specify is the size here our size is 96 and I like to one thing you can do is um, use this divider and specify the line height in relation to the size of your font which is also very important but I have all of these set to auto here in Figma um, but for example you could write auto or this um, to specify the line height um, and again when you create that style it will now appear under headers whenever you're trying to apply a style um, say I want to apply a style now it's under this category named headers and once this is more flushed out um, it'll be much easier to see the organization of all the content so I'm gonna go ahead here and create the same exact thing for my headers the rest of my headers again using the slash convention specifying that it's an h2 and it uses the weight light and the font size is 60 and the line height is set to auto um, and again for your systems it's probably going to be more specific the line height but in this example I'm not going to get too nitty-gritty in that regard so create that style you notice that it updates here I'm gonna populate that again got that h3 specify the weight again and specify the size and of course the line height so you can see it continues to populate and now I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of this uh, I'll create one subtitle to so you can see the differentiation of categorization uh, between two different categories which will be our headers and subtitles so I'm gonna go ahead here add the style label it subtitle subtitle one specify the weight which is regular and then of course the size of that font and I don't know it off the top of my head but I believe it's set to six the subtitle set to 16 which it is and the line height set to auto so here you can see now that your textiles are organized here clearly and I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of this and I'll be right back all right so now we got all our content set up and organized so you can see that i've now spliced these into what is that three four four categories we got the headers we got the subtitles and we got the body and the content and one textile i'm actually missing is this subtitle what's going on here let me just debug this real quick we got subtitle 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 one and two. Oh, there we go i'm just going to organize that real quick there we go 
So in the order in which you create your textiles is how it'll appear in the hi hierarchy. So you may have to organize that. <clears throat> and now when we go ahead and create a textile, I mean create, when we need to apply a textile, we can go here, look at our textiles, and now they're beautifully organized in a clear and concise manner. And not only are they organized, each textile is named in such a way that it e it's easy to specify the size and the line height as well. And again, I just have that set to auto. Um, you could also make that the letter spacing here if you wanted to. It depends on how technical you really need to be. Um, and that's how you do that. And now our last step is uh, publishing this to our library. So now I got 26 changes to publish here. And for those of you who do not know how to use this, um, this is basically like a git commit for those of you who are developers. Um, ignore all of these removed textiles. These are old. Um, and at here you'll be able to see all the changes uh, that you've created, which are all the textiles you've added. And we can write a description. Um, adding text styles to design system. This is very vague, but uh, gives you a general idea how to do that. And again, you can view all the changes made and everything that is unchanged here below. And then and you can publish. And the nice thing about leaving comments is that it leaves a trail to track any history. Um, so if we go to show version history here by clicking this carrot, click show version history, we can see that we just published um, our textiles and we left that message. So we can actually go to that point in time by clicking on it and it'll take us there. Or we could go even further back to a point in time where these weren't even created. So if I click on 6.47 p.m., it's gonna load, and I'm viewing the time this auto saved at 6.47 p.m., and you can see that there are no textiles here. And you can't edit this version, but say you needed to, you could duplicate this, um, and then go to that duplicated file and grab what you needed and then bring it into the current version. And if you hit escape, you can get back to your current version or you can click the button edit current version and if you're lost i'd hit two on your keyboard it's a shortcut key to fit everything everything in your canvas to your frame and now we found ourselves back here um, with all our textiles here not local anymore now published so now designers can actually access this in their panel here so we go to i got mine set to material design here with all my colors published and my textiles um, Anyways, that is the tutorial for today, folks. Let me know what you thought of it, and um, please leave a comment in the comment section below if you need another video on anything design systems and Figma. And please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.